Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, everybody. It is November 26, 2018. This is episode 19 of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, and this is the beginning of the end. In this episode, we head into the latest entry in Mistborn Era 2, The Bands of Mourning. I am Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my fully invested co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Yes. Welcome, guys. I was, uh, okay, so full disclosure, I totally <laughs> get, was predicting you would go with metabolic. Ah. <laughs> uh, Nope. Well, I was just. Well, and now I can never use that ever again. So thanks for that, Jordan. You're welcome. <laughs> he's going to destroy. He's going to destroy my arsenal one adjective at a time. That's okay. That's Where's okay. Uh, the English language is big. The English language is my domain. Yes. Everything the light <laughs> touches. The library. Like that. Everything Ooh, everything the library touches. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay, anyway, for those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube, we just want to remind you that it is possible for you to join in and interact with us on chat as we record each episode live at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. Uh, we record our episodes every other Monday night starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, so join us. Come. Take part in the discussion. Talk to us. Do our sound check for us. Yeah. Tell us we're pretty. Thank, we, uh, special thanks to Black Diamond in chat tonight yes. who has been helping us with our audio issues. I got a brand new computer, which is amazing. Love it. But uh, it means I have to completely set up everything anew. That said, uh, I was using up 90% uh, of my CPU last time we did this, and now I'm sitting at 9% of my CPU. So... That's Things are slightly right better than before. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It turns out 16 cores is amazing. Humble brag. Oh, no, <laughs> it's not a humble brag. <laughs> Ain't nothing humble about no, that. No, <laughs> no. I, sp I spent a lot on this computer, and I am happy with it, and its name is Iceberg, and that's all that matters. Anyway. Oh, okay. Okay, well, guys, I did something over Thanksgiving break. Yes, you did. I read Skyward. I haven't Guys, read it yet. It's so good. I but, wanted to keep my my brain fresh for Bands of Morning to do the first episode at least, and I didn't have time. To and I didn't it, do so. that, so I might stumble <laughs> through a couple things. I so am fully so, admitting that. So it's weird. Like this is the first time I wrote the show notes. Pretty much, like ninety percent of them I wrote, uh -huh. which is really weird for me. I'm like, and then Bill didn't change anything. I don't know. This is strange for me. So we're gonna well, I'm about looking it. through. I was like, she didn't say <laughs> anything about the spaceship. I, I just don't understand. <laughs> I, I added it. I got, I got stuff. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm not talking about, oh, the, about Skyward yet. I'm talking about an actual spaceship. <laughs> no. No, I haven't read Skyward yet. Uh, I, I, I own so it. Good. I just don't, haven't, I haven't made time for it yet. Also, I just, I love Brandon's pitch for this book. Hmm. It's the, it's the common trope of, Young girl finds a hibernating dragon, but put into a science fiction universe, and instead of a dragon, it's a sentient starship. Which is cool. It sounds very cool. So that's kind of nice. Anyway, so yeah, basically the point is, read the book, because I need to talk to people about it. Soon. I will read soon. Good. Good, good. Soon. All right, well, before we dive in, we would just want to remind those of you who may just be tuning in. We are currently spending an episode two, four, in the cases of books that have something to do with Stormlight, um, to discussing each book's storyline, figuring out sort of where it fits in the Cosmere, picking apart the plot points, gushing about the characters and events that we love, 
all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And then later on, once we've gone through each of the books and we've sort of given an overview of everything, we're going to start diving in a little bit deeper. We're going to look at some overarching themes across the books. We're going to look at some theories about how magic systems might interact. We're going to start making crazy crackpot predictions, uh, aluminum foil hat theories, as we're calling them. And we want you to submit some of those theories as well. So please feel free to write us at Cosmere Studies at gmail.com. Let us know what you think. Let us know of any topics you want us to discuss. If there was something that we missed, let us know, and we might sort of come back to it in a later episode. And if there's something in a book that you know is coming up that you want to make sure we don't miss, tell us that too. Well, and then we'll put it in the show. Especially, this is the book where things especially start going in that direction with the 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 true overlapping of the worlds. It's true. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, dang it, I gotta remember. This one came out after Words of Radiance, correct? Or was it before? After Words of. Of yeah. course, you ask me. It's it's listed in okay. the. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it was after Words of Radiance. Words of Radiance started having some crossover but nothing too overt but this one it's like okay well that's definitely chris at the party and uh i was so i was i was so proud of myself that i spotted her i was like oh, i spotted someone and it wasn't like my name is hoyd it was right there and i, I was proud uh yes <laughs> i didn't the first time but i don't think i'd read um white sand yeah, i, I, I don't didn't think it was that. i didn't catch it either but that's because i i didn't realize that the the people from White Sands had darker skin, mm -hmm. uh, and so when yes. he said, "When he says, oh, you know, it was a lady who looked sort of terrace, but man, her skin was way darker than any other terrace yeah. woman I've ever seen," and it's like, "Ain't mm -hmm. no terrace woman." Nope, <laughs> totally different. Are they, are they called like dark siders? Is that what it yeah. is? So, so um, on Taldane, the world is tidally locked. So there's the light side and the dark side of the planet, where. There is a desert on one side, and there is not a desert on the other side. And mm. but yeah, and so she's she's from the dark side. The, the, Sounds like a different the, thing, but we know what she, you mean. She's not a Sith Lord, yeah. but anyway. <laughs> um, the other thing that I love though is there's another little subtle place where where Chris shows up is in the broadsheet. Yes. The broadsheet. And I I didn't connect who it was at first. I was just like, who would that be? Because that's a because I make sure to read all the little things in the broadsheets, and I'm like. Talking tools. Well, and I love that because it just it, it makes you think. Is, is, does, does Nightblood have like a, a cousin who's a who's a shovel or <laughs> or a butter knife? I would love a butter knife. A butter knife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know that if Nightblood had a butter knife cousin, he would be like he would have like short man syndrome, oh, and he would so be much. aggressive. <laughs> and just... <laughs> is it, it, would his name be Knife Blood? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I'm mad at you. No, you're not. <laughs> I am so mad at you right you now. You love me. Oh. But more importantly, uh, this book. Um, yes. There. So I thought it was interesting the way it started off in the Terrace Village in the mm -hmm. flashback with, with Super Wax. Super dark and creepy. Well, we, well, where we find out where Wax has always been this person he's always been a lawman even when he was a kid and a little detective too yeah oh my God. and <laughs> has in much like harry potter kind of a blatant disregard for the rules mm -hmm. it's weird because he likes the law but he doesn't much care for rules yeah he doesn't like them constricting him yeah and if he and it, it seems like if he doesn't understand why it is he's like it's just a stupid reason so he's like so why do you have the rule if it's just getting well, in the way it, it's like I've said for years about the English language. You need to know the rules so you can know which ones to break. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was a very dark opening. Oh, and man. It, but was, it, I kept thinking about that scene in earlier books. I was like, where is that? I can't remember exactly where it is, but I know it's horrible. Well, and it's I, I love the lessons he learns there. The fact that he ends up pushing on the bullet and mm -hmm. that's how like, and his, is it like his head. Oh no! He he shoots the bullet. That's yeah. what it is. He shoots he fires the. It. He fires it. You 
and what's he use he uses his allomancy and mm-hmm. he's not supposed to do that and it's like at the end how is what lesson is he supposed to take away from that other than no i have like if i had followed the rules like this kid would be dead and i'd be dead yeah <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, and well, would have no he wouldn't be dead because it. he would have stayed in his room had he followed the rules. Okay, mm. that's true. But yeah, he but he bro- more and more kids would have potentially died because of what Forge was doing. Yeah, and yeah. it just I found it very interesting. Also, getting to see his sister in the past and find mm-hmm. out oh she's always she been. Didn't- she didn't have much. You you didn't get a whole lot out of her or about her in the opening scene, though. No, but you got the return of the the st- the steel runner that uh, bleeder killed. Yeah, Ish. Yeah. Oh, Ish Ishway or something like that. Ishwe, I think, is right. Yeah. 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 Something to that effect. I I can't say their names very well. Her name sounds like the sound wind goes by when it passes you, <laughs> Ishwe. <laughs> Whoosh. Her name is Whoosh. Yeah. But yeah, but, it, um, that was a very interesting uh, scene to me. Oh, it was yeah. dark. The part of me that that wants everything to be uh, the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy wanted the police officer to be uh, to be uh, I was, in my head I'm saying Adolin, not Adolin. Uh, what's the police chief's name? Oh, Aridel. Oh, uh, Aridel, yeah. He's, he's the mayor by this point, or the... The governor. Or, governor, I was like. Governor? Le- yeah. Leadership guy. I don't know, just the part of it, I just like... Yes, I want the it to leadership be, guy. <laughs> I just wanted it, but even though I know... No, that's, it doesn't all work like that. It's not all no. Batman. Even if, we, even if <laughs> Wax, by the end of this, is totally Batman. Oh, and, but he's an even cooler Batman. Well, let's let's not go too far. But um, I but what I love about him him into the ba- his theatrics gets called much more uh, into gets called out a lot more in this book. Oh. <laughs> well, and I think part of that is because you know, for the past two books, the first book especially, Morassi was smitten with him. Yeah. Second book, she's getting past it and still feels awkward around him. This book, she's just. You know, finally comfortable around it, and she's just like, you know, you're kind of over the top sometimes. <laughs> well, and not just her; it was also suit. I loved it when he like oh, goes shit. and makes that entrance, and like because he hears him talk, he's like, "Why does my uncle sound so far away?" And I just was just like, "Where is where where is Waxilium?" And then he like drops from the ceiling. He's <laughs> right here. <laughs> And then, like, the, it, it ends the chat. It ends the the chapter. Then, when it comes back, wax silly. Um, sorry, I couldn't be there. I am certain your entrance was appropriately dramatic. Like, and, just, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, suit. I know you're in a three man race with Straff Venture and Sadius for the biggest jerk in the history of the Cosmere. But, dang, if I don't like it when you make fun of him <laughs> for these things. Yeah, the thing is, well, and it's. We saw the beginnings of that in in the prologue for the second book, mm-hmm. you know, where he's like, it's my thing. It's good to have a thing. I have a thing. Where he tries to jump out of the horse from, you know, from above. <laughs> well, it, but he, like, he's not wrong. Uh-huh. He's not wrong. Theatrics in this regard does have an effect. Like, if We were he, talking about Batman. That's... Yeah. Yeah. It it has an effect on the criminal element. If he can come in and give them this impression that, uh, no, I'm everywhere and I'm always right behind you in your blind spot, that's yep. gonna make them think twice about doing things. It's about showmanship. <laughs> <laughs> and the, but the problem is, suit knows that as well, and then's like, okay, I'm gonna give you a problem you can't ignore. Okay, so I've got a question because it never really struck me the first time I read these books, but it recently did. Suit. Mm-hmm. Are we talking about, like, he always wears a suit, or are we talking card suits? I think we're talking card suits myself. I think we are, too. It just, I, it never really struck me until this time as I was reading it. It was, like, the first time they said, they said suit. Mr. Suit, because he's always wearing a suit. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when he's de- when we're dealing with the set and the Matrix oh, and that's sequences, true. and I'm just like, a suit could be 
you know, an, another classification, a grouping. Yeah, I, so. yeah, I mean, yeah, because we have suit, sequence, set, array, matrix. Mm -hmm. All their names are very mathematic based. Exactly. Um, and I believe and a suit is also something in math. I'm trying to is remember. It? I believe I so. Know. Unfortunately, everything I'm looking up uh, online is coming up in French, which is a Sweet. problem. Yeah, I don't speak any French. But I mean, I, I assume French. it. I assume it is something math based because what else would come up with the term in cards? Probably is some sort of grouping of numbers of some kind. Mm -hmm. And so it's true. It could just, or it could just be set in French. I don't know, but it's uh, mm. yeah, it's th this is the one where we get all the interesting stuff with the magic, and I don't, I don't even. Where do we want to even begin? Well, like uh, <laughs> you know, Jordan and I, we you know, we've talked about the first one was a western. The most recent, or the last one that we read was more of a Sherlock Holmes. And this feels like we've stepped into an Indiana Jones story. Yeah. yeah. Complete with sunken temples and booby traps. <laughs> All the booby traps. Oh my goodness. So many. My favorite one was the acid that had separated over time. <laughs> just like, and I'm just like, yeah, because this... you wouldn't sit there and make a trap and think about, oh, what if, uh, what if the specific density of these things ends up making them separate over a couple of centuries. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, that was interesting about that trap, though, was the look on Milan's face afterwards, because that's She's one of the like, few people oh. who can kill a Chandra. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of those, I just dodged a bullet. That could have you know? been really bad. Yeah. Well, I'm like, even mm -hmm. if it hadn't separated, that chunk coming for her could crush her entire skeleton. <laughs> I loved her 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 skeleton her aluminum skeleton that was awesome mm -hmm. she just like yanks an arm off and has like a knife in it or something <laughs> it's like, like... A so... and she's sitting here just like oh harmony i just love this body <laughs> like, i use this one more often this is awesome <laughs> this is my destroy everything body yeah actually you know okay so i know what i want to talk about yep. let's start with character development okay because this okay. is you know, this is the third book in a trilogy that we've had some major character development oh, in several characters. So much, yeah. Um, do we let's start, start, should we do Wayne since he's... I was gonna say, let's, let's start with Wayne. Yeah. Okay. So in the first book, Wayne is just this, you know, he's a goofy little sidekick who's got some great quips. Yeah. And we find out a little bit about him. You know, we know he doesn't like to fire a gun. We know that he's basically tormented because he accidentally... And, you know, due to his own actions, uh, ended up killing a man who had a family. But it's just you, you get so much from him. You know, every so you, it's easy to fall into the pattern of thinking, oh, this guy's just the funny little guy. And then suddenly he just reveals a part of himself and it really throws you, you know? It's, it's interesting, actually, especially with a lot of the actors and stuff who have had who died recently in different things mm -hmm. and that they've, they've commented on the fact that like some of the funniest people are super depressed or have right. super emotional issues and stuff like that, but they don't show them off until mm -hmm. it's, they, you know, have suicide or something else like that. And it's just kind of, just sitting there and go, wow. Cause they're normally like for what everybody in the public sees, they're hilarious and mm -hmm. think oh, everything's great for them, but it's really, a lot of people have a lot more facade to them, to the public eye than, you would ever assume absolutely well and it's um, also it's so it, it fits a lot with what brandon talk has, sort of running theme is how broken people are the ones who make the difference in his worlds and it's almost mm -hmm. because you have to be broken to see the cracks in reality itself right well, and the thing is that I feel like that's one of the reasons his books succeed in the reasons that the Marvel movies have succeeded so well because the Marvel movies aren't about the superheroes. They're about the people behind them. Mm -hmm. They're about the individuals and the struggles that they face as individuals. Yeah. Rather I than think, as the, this facade. And that's like how... Especially Marvel versus the DC because DC mm -hmm. like makes them super grim and dark and horrible and everything, whereas Marvel has lots of goofy moments, but there's a lot of character development and character mm -hmm. relationship and all of that. 
built up in a lot of the plot. And that's what Brandon focuses on, is he focuses on his characters. Not just the roles that they're playing, but the characters themselves. Yeah. Um, for, for example, but with Wayne, one of his first <laughs> moments of, of development is when he finally decides, after everything, he sits down... And it was it Marasi he's talking about talking to about yeah to move on? well it's because it's after he's ruined the wedding and he's trying mm-hmm. to get Marasi to go after Wax again yeah, yeah and he's like and, you yeah. totally go for it you know and she's like no I'm over it and they're happy and no I'm not Just doing no. that yeah. he's like I've moved on and he's like mm-hmm. what you can do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. and 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 so he decides well maybe it's time for me to move on and that. And he, I think he talks about it, and they're like, yeah, she's got a girlfriend, so yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, I think she's not going to go for you. And yeah, he just, so that's really, a, that's still a thing? That's a, they're just like, <laughs> still, yeah, still going yes. on? Yeah, pretty sure it's still going on. But the, the scene where he talks to her, and, and where he's heading to meet her, and he keeps referring to the goddess, and because he really has worshipped her. For all oh, yeah. these years. And in a way that only Wayne can. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and it's, then he... it's, such, it's such a sweet scene, though. It's Up bizarre. until he is it's... like at the end. <laughs> and then oh. he pops in his Wayne personality like, no, no. I... Would you think she'd be open to me? <laughs> like, no. <sighs> I will suppose if you ever wanted to. And it's just like old Renette returns. Wayne? <laughs> right, right, okay, okay. Right, okay. right. sorry. I'm not gonna, can we forget but, that I did that? And she's like, yeah, we'll just let that go. <laughs> but the thing that I love, like, it was so sincere. Mm-hmm. You know, and he got, like, he's, he's, he's dramatic in a, a way that only Wayne can be, yeah. but it was still, it wasn't bravado, it was just Wayne. Anybody and, coming from anybody else, it would have been like, no, oh, that and can't Renette, be what you And meant. Renette sees it, and she hugs him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she does. And it's just, it, it's one of those, because she sees, like, she's known this guy for years. Mm-hmm. And she realizes this isn't an act. This isn't bravado. This is something that he needs to do. And this is him finally moving on. And she just, it, it touches her. Mm-hmm. Even crusty old Burnett, she She's just touched by this absolute sincerity because you know, Wayne is a person who puts on so many different masks. Mm-hmm. And it feels like this, this moment was Wayne unmasked. Yeah. So. Um, the other, he gets told by Wax to leave Saris alone, too, later right on. Right at the end, yeah. He's, mm-hmm. he's going to start making digs at Saris, and Wax, or Wax is like, leave it. Just stop. And you've i think by this point you've had a scene or two from wayne's perspective and he refers to like wax and almost a deific type thing too that it's like yeah. he is an ultimate power type thing and so it's just kind of interesting that that wayne he, built so many big personalities around himself and doesn't think of him as normal people so much that wayne is a very religious man in his own in way yeah. his <laughs> own bizarre way and then Wayne does move on. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm telling you, like, Amy, you said you didn't like this the first time. The first time I saw it, I was just like, well, well it's perfect. I mean, oh. you have two people who their entire lives have been playing so many different roles. I and have forgotten such... that I didn't like it. But... And they, they just have such an understanding of humanity. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I just think it's brilliant. It's still kind of just weird in a way if you start thinking about the oh. biological. But I'm like, I don't want to think about that. It's it's definitely weird, but at the same time, you know, they, they Wayne you is know. Wayne is aside from physically a chondra. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, and so it's just one of those. It actually kind of makes a bizarre sort of sense. Mm-hmm. Plus, she's just as crazy as he is. <laughs> In this book, we actually get a better feel for Con. Like, even even though you would have thought last book would have been sort of the peak of us learning about Condra biology, this one, we get a real feel for what mm-hmm. they can do because we see Milan put through so put through 
stuff. Well, and then on top of it, when she does the internal surgery on yeah. Marisy by oh, taking a bite yeah. out of her to cre to duplicate her flesh so that she can suture mm -hmm. it. But yes. she she's like, and she has to like spit out the the stuff that was going bad or, or whatever. Yeah. Else. And yeah. Her cross, he's like, oh that, oh that's so gross. Well, <laughs> it's like I don't even want to think about it. And, and, and when you, Milan's like, yeah, you you owe me for that. <laughs> it's like, like you that were, part did not taste good. <laughs> you weren't even slightly rotten, and that's just yeah. <laughs> like this was not good. No, no but and you were talking about internal surgery when she knits her own bones together. Yeah. She builds with like tendons and tendons. whatever else. Sinew. To hold the bones together after they're oh, shattered by the rocks and the, she, the she traps. And... So much punishment in that fight. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh. She is absolutely put through the ringer. And in the end, she's like, and that's why she's not a part of this big final battle because she has a right to take a little bit of a rest while, yeah. while things are going on. Especially because her, her spikes were stolen from her, and that's just all sorts of traumatic. Mm hmm. And then, and then Wayne's final moment of growth when he is just pushed past his limit. That was because... such a satisfying scene for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> it was it was satisfying and then not satisfying, and I was like, because oh, he didn't finish it, and I'm like, I can't blame him because it's Wayne. But at the same time, I really wish someone else had just walked by and just been like, nope. Well, that's, nope. that's what I love is the post of that scene where he and he and Wax talk about it. And Wax is like, you you saw that she had a gold mine, didn't you? And he's like, yeah. And then he gives his logic. He's like, I would have done it because that's, I think, what you would have done. And mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, you're learning. And then, like, internally, mm -hmm. he's like, no. He, like, it's, it's sort of like at, very Avatar, <laughs> the last Airbender. No, she's crazy. It needs to go down. Oh, but... she's crazy. It needs to go down. <laughs> That's uh, my sister, yeah. Yeah. And, but I just love that he he shields Wayne from from that truth. Because mm -hmm. it, it's, it's one of those, it's very much in their character for... Oh, for Wayne to be sitting there hoping, you know, trying to be like Wax, and mm -hmm. for Wax to let Wayne be Wayne, even if he thinks it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. Wayne is such an interesting character because even though he's rough around the edges, he's probably the most innocent of the entire group. Yeah. Like, even more so than Marasi, I think. Because Marasi is, is learning to toughen herself up against mm -hmm. killing people. Because she doesn't like it, but she can do it. Mm -hmm. And Steris, it almost feels like she doesn't usually do anything terribly violent, but right. she has seen some darker sides. I mean, especially finding mm -hmm. out that, yeah, my dad cheated on my mom, and here's your sister. That said, <laughs> she almost completely destroyed herself by shooting the skimmer shotgun. <laughs> Blew yeah. herself off the train. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to try and help out, and then, no. <laughs> He was not ready for that. This is, but okay. the, the, sk the skimmer gun is one of the reasons I love Red Dead. She's like, oh, wait, you can you could give yourself... Oh, okay, yeah, let's just do this for someone who that? can increase their weight. And, it's, <laughs> and he has this gun that gives just impossible kick mm -hmm. that only he can fire. And it's like, well, and, and, the personal, it's mine. And when, when, he, when he pulls her out of the water, she says, what is wrong with that gun? <laughs> not right something's wrong with that and it's like it's it's made for me you can't but i love that that's her reaction that's her response she's been blown off a train and she's immediately thinking something has gone wrong like my calculations guy. are off what is the factor yeah yeah she, does she still has emotion behind it oh, what yeah. is wrong with that <laughs> but it's just, uh, okay let's talk about steris because we talked a little bit about it last week, but I just, you know, she has just improved every single book. In the first book, she's very boring, very dry, and she's not really there. She's she's the damsel in distress. She is yeah. she's the MacGuffin of the first book. Mm -hmm. But and then the second book, suddenly we start seeing her a little bit better. And then in the third book, we're just like, oh. Oh, you're delightful. <laughs> so awesome. And it's 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 great to see that Wax sees it in her, too. And you can see the fondness for her growing throughout the book. Mm -hmm. And and she shows signs of it, you know, obviously, as she goes through the book, too. And it's it was kind of painful to read the first wedding because, you know, 
poor Starish. She has to be interpreting like him shaking and clenching and whatever else like that as he hates me so much or he, he hates his whole mm. or something. And she's sitting there going, and I mean, she's probably seen something near affection in, in between the books. And then to have that on your wedding day would be right. pretty not okay. Well, especially because between the books, you know, she has been his comfort. Yeah, his support he system. Murdered his his first wife. Yeah. And you know, so she knows. She knows what he had and what she's not. Mm-hmm. Which is always hard. I I don't have any personal experience, but it always sounds really hard to be the second wife because you're always going to be compared to the first one, especially if it was a good relationship. Mm-hmm. Um. But but then. You know, suddenly it's not just that she's left; it's that she's dead, and it's that he killed her. Yeah. So, and and she had to hold him as he cried mm-hmm. and everything else. And and I think they have a conversation. And he, he, I don't remember where this conversation is in the book, but but he's like, everybody else just wanted to talk to me, and he's like, and you just let me be, mm-hmm. and we're we're just there, which matters so much more mm-hmm. than. The, the false words of comfort. Not that people aren't meaning them, but there's a lot of times where if you haven't really been through it, what do you say? And even if you right. have, what do you say? It's it's just such a hard situation. And, and she realizes that. And so all she did was she was just there. Mm-hmm. And she let, I mean, the, the at the end of the last book, she was there and he just cried and she yeah. just let him. And that's a scene that I was like, and now I'm crying. This is great. Thanks, Brandon. I needed that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Go cry at a book again. Um, do but you want me just, to start? Yeah. Do you want well, me to start no, going into this? A little, a little bit more about Steris still because. Okay, that's fine. Because Steris is wonderful in this book. Yeah, I, wasn't, me, I, I wasn't going to try and cut off the Steris thing. I, was I love it. how super prepared she is. She basically has a bag of tricks. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just like, I, and, I figured we might need this and we might need this, but I couldn't fit this. And, I, and so she's like the ultimate hoarder packer. Almost. But so organized because, yeah, and, mm-hmm. and was, is it was at the party that she manages to sneak in. Is it a, it's like a pistol. An extra gun. Like, it's a, it has she's, a, she's, like, she's like, I tried to do a rifle, but she's like, you should have seen how I tried to walk with that thing. It did not work. <laughs> she, has, like, she essentially has to do these gymnastics. To do. Yeah, because they uh, take away their guns. The well, and then like she, she's gone through and she's mathematically decided how important and how useful Everybody Everyone is. is to the mission. She's like, now I'm clearly the least important. And they're like, no, no, no. She's like, no, no, no. This isn't a, you know, oh, comfort yeah. me. Oh, oh, poor me thing. This is a fact. She's like, and, legitimately <laughs> in these situations, I am only at a 7%, you know, help versus you're like, and what is it? Marasi's like, I'm an 86. Yeah. Well, like, she was, like, she, wow. she was higher than Wayne. Yep. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. And forgotten, yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing I love about that scene is that Morassi and Steris' relationship has always been just bizarre for both of them. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because of just of their parentage. But mm-hmm. and then on top of it, there's clearly something wrong with Steris. And mm-hmm. it's the thing I love is when she's like, oh, Steris, like I, I felt useless, too. And she's like, mm, I think you misunderstand me. And, Mar- and Morassi's just like. Of course I did. Okay, what is it? <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm never going to understand you. I just It's just not going to happen. Because that, that seems to be a thing with Marasi in this book, is that she thinks she understands somebody, and then they surprise her, and she's like, well, there, yeah, I keep realizing that I don't understand the people around me. But that's, for Marasi, that's a lot of her, uh, her growth in this book, is mm-hmm. both learning to just accept what she doesn't know. Mm-hmm. And that, like, she's not gonna be able to explain everything, but also learning to accept who she is and finally mm-hmm. becoming her own person. Yeah. Yep. And I just love that she's like, of course, you're always gonna be in his shadow if all you're doing is, you know, Trying sit to... did it. And I, that's yeah. what I love. I love it when she get takes up the band of mourning. And oh, then yeah. just that line, and then she tapped everything. <laughs> <She's> like, <"I'm laughs> and then she she is she and suddenly the song plays and she yeah. starts flying. Well, and I and she has so much power that mist like curtail like is coming around them and yeah, like she and, is generating mist. Yeah. yeah, and it's crazy. And then she's just like, "This is amazing." 
All right, we need to go give this to someone else. It's this isn't. <laughs> this, is, this is not my role. I've, well, I've... and it's so interesting because given that amazing graveyard scene where she's staring at Vin's statue mm-hmm. and she's like, "Oh, did you ever have that? De- like, oh, I bet not." And then she, she finally gets this basically the same power Vin had. Like yeah. at that moment, she basically was channeling preservation the same way Vin did, and she realizes, "I don't want to be Vin." That's... And that's the thing is her whole life she's looked up to the ascendant warrior. Yeah. She she is just uh, she's idolized her, and suddenly she had the option to step into that role. And yeah, and, and you're right. She just said, "No, this isn't me. It's not what I want to be." Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's there was also okay. Um, I I got to get this in before I forget it. It was an observation I had. The big reveal at the end with the coin. Mm-hmm. Um, I okay. thought so. We f- so look if you're this far you know all the the reveals and the fact that it's uh it's yeah j- okay just full on spoiler warning spoiler warning spoiler warning if you're still here and you haven't read the books you shouldn't be here but if you're going to keep listening we love having you anyway but it serves you right because yes. you know what you're doing <laughs> spoiler yeah. spoiler yeah so it's at the end fault. he has the memory that's clearly from Kelsier. Uh, mm-hmm. and and it's like oh my goodness it was Kelsier to which for me as the total Kelsier fanboy that I am it, he's my favorite character in all of literature and I'm just like I knew you couldn't keep your dad you can't kill hope but <laughs> on the second read through one of the more clever little hints that Brandon gave that I didn't catch the first time so when they go to the graveyard the graveyard has the picture of Kelsier staring down you know as he's holding on to the the gates, which I'm like, what type of an opulent, yeah. opulent graveyard is this that mm-hmm. has this, like, giant uh, statue? Yeah, giant there. statue. And Marisy talks about how, like, his 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 gaze is demanding. It's almost challenging you to to figure out the the contradiction of his religion that he tells them to survive, but he didn't, mm-hmm. and all that. Later on, when we meet Alec, and he starts talking about the Sovereign, and he's like, yeah, he put it here and said, don't go there, because I'm going to take up the Bands of Mourning again when I come back to help. And they're just like, well, doesn't that seem like a contradiction? And he's like, well, yeah, but he does stuff like this all the time. Like, it's, it's a challenge. <laughs> and I'm like, like, on the second read through, I'm like, oh my goodness, that was the hint. It's a contradiction. The two... Kelsier! <laughs> yeah, I didn't well, I didn't pick up on it this time either. Until well, there was that, obvious. and also the fact that, you know, the statue at the statue of the Lord Ruler outside of the temple. Yeah. The Lord Ruler. Yeah. He has one spike in his eye, and it's just like, okay, that never happened. I'm like, what is going on with that? Like, I'd forgotten that that reveal until it hmm. was revealed. Well, and then on well, top and, of it, the fact the spear iconography that was always I was like, Why would he have, you know, had a spear? Like, I didn't. I was like, that's weird. I was wondering if it was just like them mixing, you know, the survivor and the yeah, ruler or something. I, even on or... the first read through, when I hadn't figured it out, even I'm like, that's the wrong. I, that's that's Kelsier's iconography. Now I wish I could say like, and then I realized it's Kelsier all along, but <laughs> I can't. Like, I didn't realize it until. All the, the, where it's like, survive, and it's like, son of a gun! I was yeah, like, that oh, last line, I screamed. <laughs> well, that and the, one of the other things that we did learn, though, is, again, Kelsier has a spike in his eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes me wonder. What? I, I, what's going on? I don't, I don't know. We it's don't, creepy. we don't know what, t- like, we know it's clearly the same type of spike that the Inquisitors had, because yeah. it gives this, it grants the same type of vision that the Inquisitors have, but, but why, no how did he get back, what does it do? How is he physical? That's, that's my, I'm like, what? Yeah, mm-hmm. there's so, there's yeah. so many questions that even, and we're not going to touch on it, but even Secret History doesn't even... Yeah, we're still staying away from Secret History. That will be yeah. after Bands of Mourning. But it's clear that uh, we always knew we didn't know the full breadth of the magic system. But then this book comes in and it's like, oh, you don't even know the beginning <laughs> of this magic system. Oh, uh, the, the medallions are incre- so incredible. Cool. Yes. Well, and that's because we didn't understand what storing identity meant. 
or investiture. Yeah. Or I mean, story investiture. Mm. It's it's interesting with the investiture. So the 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 cool thing about the medallion, the fact that there's the the Nicrosil band that let, let, let lets you tap the correct type of investiture that you mm -hmm. need to to start using the other metal mind. Right. And and you would think like just that by itself, holy cow, we found a way to make it so that anyone can use a metal mind. Mm -hmm. Like that you would think that would be the the end of it. But then they have Alec storing or tapping connection to speak a different language. Mm -hmm. And which is you know, and then sort of comes back a bit in Oathbringer. Uh, with, with the stuff Dalinar starts doing to speak other languages. Mm. It seems mm. a similar mechanic, though different ways of getting there. Right. But it's one of those like, okay, well, we are, we're doing, a, a, I don't know what we're doing anymore. This is <laughs> and what's like, what's an exciser? I don't know. But apparently it's important. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. The first time oh, reading through, I didn't understand how the ships were, like, I was too busy focusing on plot and getting through it to really understand how the ships worked and so i made sure to take a little more time and read it a little more slowly so i could go okay that's how i definitely didn't understand how the primer cubes worked yeah in, in the first in, in, in that specifically yeah and it's it's because of steel pushing isn't it well yeah well it's, it's, it takes any any attribute and then you yeah and it's the fact that the primer cube so you charge it up and I didn't understand, like, okay, but how does that make it so that the ship can fly? Like, that part didn't make sense to me. And uh -huh. then it's like, oh, they then put it and they t basically touch it to the rest of the et metal, use that right. same charge so that the rest of the ship has the steel push to turn the turbines. Right. And it's just, it's, it's a brilliant little setup by Brandon. Like, it, and the thing I love about it, it's like, okay, we have a new god metal, et metal. And it's mm -hmm. it's harmonium, and you're just like, okay, well, so what does it do? It essentially lets you store an alimantic charge the same way you would a ferrochemical charge, which suddenly makes Marasi's ability a lot cooler. <laughs> yep, because suddenly she has a chrono bomb <laughs> where that she can throw and just freeze people. I, and I loved the use of it. She kept using it in the fight before they launched the barge, where uh -huh. she was using it to give to give wax just little pockets of of gaps of time to actually do stuff. Well, she basically used it the same way that Wayne used his ability for wax. Differences: you can now use it remotely. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, and then and then when wax uses it and he stores uh, steel pushing tosses and suddenly the bullets are curving away from them and she's just like oh that's cool you know <laughs> I like this it's it's just it's 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 just you would think that we we've, we've scraped the bottom of the the barrel but no it turns out there's just it's it's like infinite barrels stacking on top of one another it's barrels wonder, all the way down I wonder how turtles all the way down no barrels I, I've never understood the turtles thing, but yeah. I wonder um, it, how much, how many of these ideas Brandon comes up with himself, and how many of them are fans presenting theories and him saying, "Ooh, I like that," I and just that that sort of nice plucking list. it. So that's that's a very so that first of all, there's a trope for that, um, and there there are some really cool uses of that in other medium. I haven't. I didn't hear any fans thinking about this with investiture, and no one was theorizing at metal at all because Brandon made up that one for the purposes of this book. So clearly, those were made up by Brandon. But I'm willing to bet a lot of the little niche uses of powers people have come up with, mm -hmm. like the, like the little the steel bubble, and I bet those do come from conversations with fans asking him. Well, like, yeah. or even, well, or even just his reading group too. Like they yeah. may have come up with some things too. Well, of course, the, the conversation with uh, with uh, Chris, where That's she's right. I was going to mention that where she's like, and I wonder how the why the redshift doesn't happen, <laughs> which that is something that he had addressed. That he's just like, yeah. it's just not going to happen because I need it to not happen. It doesn't happen because I said so. <laughs> yeah, but even like the question, it's like, okay, well, what a so if you change your your weight in the middle of a push, what happens? 
Mm-hmm. And these are very fan like it's got to be people like me who took <laughs> physics classes because mass is normally this immutable thing on most everyday scales. And so suddenly mm-hmm. someone who can change their mass that changes all the formula. And that's the thing. Is he changing his mass or is he changing his his weight? Yeah. Because they're not the same thing. Yeah. And it's it's so cool to sit there and have this character who's trying to figure it out. And I love how she he's like, oh, these powers aren't that rare. And she's like, yeah, but your combination is. Because mm-hmm. this is a very rare thing. It's like you're one of only three that I've ever, I can find documented. That have ever been documented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's one of these things. I think it's sort of for Wax because it's so commonplace for him. He doesn't think about the fact that no, he's one of the most broken people mm-hmm. mechanics-wise in the history of Skadriel. And some well, of the cause... things he does with pushes are things that would put even Kelsey or and Vin to shame. Mm-hmm. Well, and, or Zane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Zane was spiked. Yeah. yeah. Well, because, yeah, because Kelsey was incredibly skilled. Vin was incredibly talented. And then Zane was just powerful. Mm-hmm. And, and Wax he, said, oh, you're cute. Yeah. And it's, it's, <laughs> none of them can push the way he can because of his ability to change mass. Mm-hmm. And then you add gunplay into it, and he just does things that doesn't make sense. Again, the moment that Brandon said, I have written my first Alimantic gunfight, I, my mouth just started watering because I'm like, okay, this is a thing. All right. <laughs> I'm ready for it now. Let's just, let's just bring it. And, of course, the ways that he played with it are completely different than I ever expected. For example, ideas like a hidden safety in the gun that only steel pushers can use. Yeah. Wow. Or even smaller things like Renette automating her house like it's an Alexa when yeah. using Lurcher abilities to do it. Mm-hmm. Just We're incredible. Just set off every single person, every listener's... Uh, yeah, but not mine. Assistant. You can just say echo. It doesn't respond yeah, you can to say that. echo. No, I can't because then it responds. <laughs> mine does. That's it. That's mine activated. Word. Oh, that's yours. That's Which yeah. caused problems when they announced the new Smash characters aren't called clone fighters; they're called Echo fighters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of that that display, and it's just like all of a sudden she's going off. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a problem. <laughs> for a while just but sorry uh, that i completely was going off on a different tangent, tangent. but the, oh, so- the south skadrians coming in finally we've heard about them since era one and we finally get them and it's completely different than we pictured yeah, yeah. the concept that they adapted to being in such a hot environment and then harmony shifting things was a punishment in their eyes yeah. Yeah. And then it was freezing all the time. Mm-hmm. The the ice. Well, and just everything's backwards for them because of it. Where mm-hmm. there's like, talk about rising to hell and they must yeah. be demons indeed because they can survive these cold temperatures. And, and yeah. like if, if you go deep, it gets warm and warmth is good. Yeah, it's like we like warmth. We miss it. <laughs> oh, it was like... It, and the fact that at first, it's interesting where the set refers to them as savages, and and they refer to, you know, they they think of the northern mm-hmm. Skadrians as uh, barbarians. Yeah, Wasn't barbarians because right? they show their face all the time. Yeah, and it's and mm-hmm. I love getting the little feelings from both sides, uh, mm-hmm. how bizarre the other one is, and. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, well, and obviously, it's so reprehensible coming from Suit. And he's like, oh, you made your savage talk. How cute. And it, we did the same thing. And it's just like, oh, I really want you to receive a literal karma bomb at some point. Oh, hey. There it is. <laughs> it's called, yeah. <laughs> so, oh. I, I was really glad how the, the masks actually made sense in the culture. Because I have, I'd read a book by someone that I actually know, and they had masks be a big part of the culture in the book, and it flopped so bad. Like, one plot point hinged on it, and it didn't make sense. And it just drove me crazy, like, the whole rest of the book with the society. So it was refreshing to see a mask society that actually, like, works. Well, and I like w- looking at Marcy's, uh analysis of that mm-hmm. society and how 
First of all, they have all these big hand gestures, which makes because perfect sense if you can't read yeah. their face. But I also like how she recognizes, oh, you can easily hide any of your emotions in this society. You so reveal you exactly the emotions that you want to. And so, you do with your hands. and so they they view it as, oh, you go with your faces uncovered, you know, like a savage. And it's like, eh, we kind of like the ability to read people. <laughs> well, and the thing that was interesting is for a while, um, you know, Mary C has been interacting with Alec and she thinks, OK, so they wear these masks. But clearly it's not that important because Alec is willing to take his off and he doesn't think anything of it. And then you get the perspective from his captain. And she says that boy is far too free with raising his mask. With raising and, his mask and everything well, else. And that's that's a very Brandon thing. He likes mm -hmm. to show you the other the person, but with the other of that society. Because that's mm -hmm. what Cezed was. Cezed was not a very good terrorist man. That's true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the exact same thing. Uh, there was a, dang it. There was someone else who was like that. Uh, Tensu. Oh, and Tensu was Pinterest. like that. In, uh, the Galadon, yeah. Galadon, yeah. Yeah, and then there was someone else in uh, the Stormlight Archive that's the same thing. Oh, goodness. I can't remember what it is. Was it Ishik? No, no Ishik no. seemed to fit with his Ishik no, was pretty, yeah, that's true. I can't, but Brandon loves this trope There's, because, just, yeah. well, because it, it's, it's something that, Brandon's talked about it in uh, the podcast he does with several other writers, Writing Excuses, mm -hmm. where they talk about if you have people behave perfectly like they're expected to it becomes mm -hmm. very the trope is called planet of hats where mm -hmm. on yeah. this planet they wear hats and so it's something he actively tries to avoid and so he gets he finds you can get better mileage and you probably have to be a, an amazing writer the way brandon is to get the mileage out of it where if you show someone who's not like their stereotype you can get more out of it because you can have people react to them in that, well, like when Vinch, she's just like, you're not a very good steward, are you, Terrisman, are you? <laughs> and he's and he's like, I think I I might have hung around Kelsier a bit too much. Yeah, it's like I let myself get influenced. Well, I mean, even Dalinar in the Stormlight Archive, mm -hmm. you know, he because the funny thing is he is the epitome of old Alethkar, but he's considered completely backwards in modern Alethkar. Mm -hmm. And so you learn about both societies through just him. Yeah, <laughs> his interactions with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's interesting. So here's the real question. Why the crap did they make the Bands of Mourning? We know that Kelsier mm -hmm. does things. Reckless things. Very reckless things. Mm -hmm. Like putting the most powerful weapon in the entire world out in the open. Well, we also, Brandon has also with, said... With the thing that killed him, no less. Yeah. Which is interesting. Brandon has also said that, you know, because Kelsier is kind of the, the Snowden of the day. You know, he's like, he wants to reveal everything. There's always another secret. Let's, let's turn over every rock. And Hoyd mm -hmm. has certain things that he's like, no, 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 no. There are secrets that must be kept. And that's one of the reasons that Hoyd and Kelsier don't get along, apparently. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because um, they're... they're... The, other than the fact that Hoyt beat the snot out of Kelsier the first time they met. They had a bad <laughs> meeting. Yeah, they didn't get along. Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, but but it, they, there is a huge overlap between... They have very much, I think, the same sort of personalities, but very different methods of getting there. Mm -hmm. Both of, Both of them have a blatant disregard for waiting for other people to do things. They, they take mm -hmm. charge. They do things the way they see fit. And, and I, you, it seems like more two two leaders or strong personalities like that would clash more oh, than yeah. people who were but, but, not as but again, to do that. You know, we were we were talking about why did he make the bands of mourning and Kelsier yeah. is reckless. He wants all the information out there. He wants if, you know and he wants this he basically creates a weapon that turns anybody who holds it into a god. Into the Lord really. ruler. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's so powerful and that there's then there's the other question that how did they do it because Alec points out it's like the the best medallion I've seen lets you have three at a time mm -hmm. and this like, thing rare they this one three. lets you have they say all of them I doubt they put then again they might have put it in maybe for aluminum compounding maybe there's something you yeah. can do with that but it, like it's 
medals. It's supposed to have all of them. And I just love it. Was sixteen different medals. Yeah, which you would need for minimum for the the ferrochemical side. I Although don't. He said sixteen, did not eighteen, didn't he? Yeah, Cause well, because what's you can't make them burn. Eight, eighteen would add in. There's no point for loracium because everyone can burn loracium. You don't need. And to. it's not. And it's not there, but. Adium yeah. is age. Yeah, and there's no so, adium, so right. Yeah, and and it's not like you're. And so if you can't do adium, your heavens knows you're not going to do maladium. Yeah. And so, but yeah. it's just suddenly, and it's it's a. I love just how immediately Morassi Mar gets it, taps everything. Just what a line! Taps everything, and then just steals everyone's metal vials, downs them. And then we cut to to wonderful Steris's things, and she's like, hmm, and like shuts her book, and she's like, I did not anticipate this. I'm going to have to upwards revise what is possible in my thing. It's like, upwards revise? This wasn't part of the upper limit. There's no Steris. Just... This was over and, you know, way out there. This is called an outlier. It's okay to miss this one. Clearly, I wasn't prepared enough. I mean... <laughs> and I love how she's saying this so politely to Alec as he's freezing to death and can't understand her. Oh, <laughs> And it's Alec. just... She's just like, well, I, I had to give myself a seven. I very couldn't... Very well couldn't be a zero. And then she, like, has all the medallions... You know, she has the medallions hidden in the in, spot. In the book. It's like, here, you can get warm now. <laughs> and I just... It's just like, oh... We're having way too much fun with the most boring person on the planet. Uh, he 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 made her so fun, and and kind of adorable. Yep. Uh, can we talk a little bit about the conversation between Steris and Wax towards the end, like with the proposal and? Should and we just... do the Should we do the train thing too, or are you wanting to do that next episode more? Um, which train thing? The, I was thinking the train the train thing will probably be more in specific um, plot points, plot. but okay. we're talking about stairs, and this is kind of a character thing. I feel like was mm -hmm. just character growth from both Steris and Wax, mm -hmm. and just I, I love the way their relationship grows because it's again Brandon does this well. It's a slow burn. It's not just and suddenly they were in love. You know, it's. Yeah. You see little moments where he notices her and he appreciates the things that she does. Mm -hmm. And she does they, the same thing. They have that random scene where they're, they go up against the, uh, above the, the miss with the mm -hmm. ascendance field. That's where it was in this book that the quote uh -huh. happens. And, and he's sitting there going, you know, she should be like scared out of her mind that she's up this high and whatever, but she's like, this is amazing. <laughs> and it it just, it's it fun. reminds me of uh, the scene from the fir very first Superman movie where, you know, Superman is flying with Lois and it's just sort of a, you know, there's the chance to be terrified or there's the chance to see this is the person that I'm with. And, and that's mm -hmm. how it works. I just, it, it, I, it was very, it was very reminiscent of that. I can see that. Yeah. But, you know, for, well, first off, before the conversation between Steris and Wax, I want to talk about the conversation between Steris and Marasi, where Marasi, you know, she realizes, oh my gosh, you're in, you're actually in love with him, mm -hmm. and <laughs> poor Steris is just, you know, completely embarrassed by it. I'm like, you're in love with the guy you're gonna marry, you know? This I mean, be wonderful, yeah. <laughs> you don't get embarrassed by this. You're married, <laughs> mm -hmm. but of course she doesn't think there's anything that he could love about her because poor Steris. She's just... It's very that... easy as a woman, especially in that society, to think not much of yourself. Especially when she's hanging out with Wax and Wayne and Marasi who can all do crazy things well, in fights and she's rating herself at a seven going, I don't have as much value that way. Especially when she hasn't ever understood the people around her anyway. Yeah. she, You know, everybody thinks, oh, she's part of society and she she is prepared because she's terrified of society of other people yeah. and so and she's thought of every possible thing it's it's a high anxiety thing i've i've done it myself because you know everything that could go wrong and it, because so that 
if something does go wrong, you won't be caught unprepared. Yeah, you're, you're prepared for it so that you know how you can mm-hmm. react and not have to sit there and go, well, now what do I do? And and so, but she's grown up her whole life, never fully understanding and fitting in with those around her. Mm-hmm. And when she does fit in, it's because she has orchestrated a situation. And it's not because she naturally feels comfortable in this setting. Yeah, when she has those, I think it's at the party, she has some good quips that she comes out with and Wax is mm-hmm. like, that's really good. And she's like, yeah, I prepared that line. Mm-hmm. Which, which she's deprecating herself there. But I mean, at the same time, I have a lot of times where I'll be in a conversation with people or whatever else. And I go, oh, I, and I think, well, oh, I should have said something witty there. And then as soon as I'm driving home or whatever else, I'm like, that's what I should have said. <laughs> and, and she that's does what I should have said. And, and she does it beforehand. So, I mean, I don't have as many social poor Sarah's does, but mm-hmm. I yeah, also I love though that normal. she's that she's so genuine with him about it. Mm-hmm. You know, she says, "I prepared that line," and because everyone else, she's putting on a front, and with Wax, she's just like, she, "Yeah, this is me. This is who mm-hmm. you're marrying," mm-hmm. and that's who he falls for. Yeah, and I, I just, I loved the proposal scene because he's like, "Well." I mean, I know it's you're you're tired and it's late and there's been a lot going on and, and she then she starts crying or whatever and he's just like, are are those happy tears or, or sad tears? <laughs> he's just like, I have no idea how to tell. It's because, it, and and she's like, no, this is wonderful. This is the first time I haven't planned something and I love it. <laughs> so uh, I that got the the cute uh, yep out of me when I read it because I'd forgotten that it was so cute. Yep, Steris is just... She was the dark horse character in this book that just Mm -hmm. came out of nowhere and you just love her. The thing that also helps her, I think, as far as her competence in in the book is how she has a very accurate understanding of what she can do. Mm -hmm. And because of that, she, she doesn't... The only time she got herself in over her head is when she tried to shoot the gun. (laughs) <laughs> and, yep. and every other time she's and that was no, because there was something about the gun she had no she was completely yeah, well but you yeah. notice does she ever try anything like that ever again no as soon as she she's like no this is like she mm-hmm. tried to do that part and then she realized no okay we don't do that again but the mm-hmm. moment she is useful and she knows it like when Wax starts blustering in front of the Malwish people, getting ready to start war because Wax has the political mm-hmm. acumen of a rock. And she's just like, Wax? Okay. Get this way. <laughs> let's try this. Let me let me handle this because this politics stuff is why I was brought. And she mm-hmm. under, she immediately sees, oh no, this is my time, and she doesn't she you know she doesn't back away from that she she's learned to be a bit bolder with this stuff mm-hmm. and she goes straight for it well and and that's the thing she even mentions i gave myself a 7% instead of a 0 because there are situations where right. i am useful yeah but and i think this is after she finds out that it doesn't stay simply diplomatic and political because she's like i came along because i thought it was going to be just this and mm-hmm. she's like and then it turns out that it's action and adventure and everything else and she's like so my use kind of goes down quite a bit because of because of that. Mm-hmm. Just love as they fly away. Wax is like, uh, what? One second. <laughs> I, I need to. I need to. I need to do something. I and need then, to go pick up my even, wife. Yeah, my wife to be. But it was even what was it when he when they left her with the horses? You know, he's all prepared to like tell her that she has to stay and that she's going to fight him. And she's like, no, that's fine. And he's and he keeps trying to convince her. And he's like, wait, oh wait, you're you're okay. And she's like, yeah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> she's like that's sneaking and fighting which is not my forte so i'll i'll hang out here with the horses you go ahead and that infiltration yeah. scene was so good oh man that's when you get the, the spoiled something tomato what was it yep spoiled tomato it was spoiled a spoiled tomato, tomato. Okay. okay well and then when wayne when wayne says wow milan would be really good at spoiled good at that. tomato <laughs> would be really well at that. <laughs> No, he doesn't say spoiled tomato. He says the one that he made up. The the oh, that's right. The, 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 the black the watch. The black watch double stomp. I think it is. I don't even know, but just some random. Yeah. I just love yeah. that. First of all, you know Brandon loved writing that scene where he's just making up crap 
Mm-hmm. And just coming up, th- uh, too messy. Uh, what about this one? And it's like, it's too dark okay. outside. What about that one? We don't and have this friend in Tooler. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's like, okay. What about this one? What what was, I don't know, that one just made it up. But it sounds cool, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and Milan's like, uh, what's going on? And Marcy's just like, just let them do this. Just, this, this is a thing. This is the, this is their thing. All right. Well, we we need to start wrapping up. So, um, guys, what do you think? Do we have time for an email or? I don't, but uh, we definitely want to talk about this email uh, next week. So, uh, Josh, thanks for the email. We're going to talk about it next episode, definitely. Next, yeah. Because he's, he's actually sent us a few. But so yeah. But yeah, we'll we'll talk about. We'll, we'll do an email next week. Right now, we're we're starting to. We can't start. we can't let me start a physics conversation with only thirteen minutes. Uh. <laughs> That's true. That's very very true. All right. Well, uh, as we're wrapping up, as always, we want to thank our patrons. Y'all are the ones who make it possible for us to keep doing the show. Um, of course, the show will continue to be free for everybody. But if you want to support us, even with just a buck or two each episode. Go to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Uh, by becoming a patron, you'll get immediate access to our Discord channel. Um, we've got a bunch of people in there. We start fun chats. People talk about the books, things that they love. We talk about stuff completely outside of the books. It's just a fun community that's grown. So you can join us there. Um, you also can just continue the discussion about the Cosmere and interact with us directly. You'll also get bonus content like the 6-7, which is a collection of seven pieces of content we find each episode that the hosts want to share, um, and as well as early access to, excuse me, to any bonus content we produce. Beyond that, our patrons are automatically entered into our giveaways, which we will have um, start doing again once we cross our threshold. And just to clarify, those giveaways aren't exclusive to our patrons. They're free to enter for anybody. Our patrons will just sort of get an automatic in. Um, and one of the best things that the patronage help is, of course, it helps us to make the show and improve the quality of the episodes. Once we get more patrons, we're hoping to record more often, and we want to invest in better equipment so that we all sound good, because we know that it's easier to listen to people with better equipment, and we want to make it as pleasant an experience for you as possible. Um, now, this week, we actually do have a new patron to thank, Stephen K. Thank you very much for your generosity. Um, and, of course, to all of our other patrons as well, it's because of your donations that we're able to keep putting out new episodes every other week. Um, okay, so we're not going to do an email this week. But if you ha- do have questions or feedback for us, we do want to hear it. Let us know what you're thinking about the show, what moments you like, what um, uh, what you don't like. Constructive criticism only, please. Don't flame us. Um, and just what have you been dying to know more about? What do you want us to talk about? What topics interest you what do you love about the cosmic um is there something in a book that we're going to talk about soon that you want to make sure we don't miss let us know is there something that we did miss at a previous book let us know we might have a chance to talk about it at the end of an episode um we'd love to hear it so send us an email at cosmere studies at gmail.com and we just might read and discuss your email in an upcoming episode now outside the show We've all got our own projects. So, Jordan, what can we find your work outside of the... Uh, can we actually start with Amy? Because I have to go a bit long because you know what's happening with me. So, well, Like I said, Amy, what uh, can we expect from you? <laughs> and where can we find your stuff? Um, so you can find me on Facebook at Coincidence Cosplay and Props. Um, Twitter at, at Coincidence Cost because the name is too long. And on Instagram at Coincidence underscore Cosplay. I do lots of random things like I made... A little statue and I made him a cloak and a scythe so he has he's the death squeaker I think is what it is from Terry Pratchett as well okay. as, um, I just saw somebody else do it I thought that was really funny to do that and so I, I made that and my Nazgul is moving along okay I still mostly have the foam bits left and that's the part that scares me because I've got like 50 some odd pieces for just the gauntlets and awesome. it's freaking intimidating um, but the cloak is pretty much done. I have like a black mask thing, so you can't see my face. And I have the tunic done, and so I, I look sort of scary. I put my black gloves on. I'm going to post that picture soon with me doing everything on that I, nice. I had my husband take. That's 
So I mostly just look like I'm black. This thing, black thing that's just coming at you. Um, but yeah, so I'm working on a Nazgul right now as my main project and making lots of Christmas gifts because I'm crazy like that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, when I'm not here, I'm writing board game reviews over at the Innkeeper's Table at innkeeperstable.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of them at at Innkeeper's Table. And Jordan, how about you? Okay, so I am having a big charity event uh, coming up on December 8th. That's a Saturday this year. Um, for those of you who don't know, I do a bunch of Smash, uh, Super Smash Brothers content. December 7th, the new game Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is coming out. On December 8th, I'm having a big charity event. I'm going to stream on my channel, twitch.tv slash splicestream, for the benefit of the Gamers Outreach Foundation. They are a charity that go to hospitals and they set up gaming stations for in children's wards for kids who are there for extended or t even terminal stays to help give them something. Because if you think about being a small kid in this big scary building, you're don't get to be with your parents all that often. And so they set up these things to help these kids with, go through what's a very difficult part of their life. That's what the Gamers Outreach Foundation does. And so what we're gonna be doing is, I'm inviting a bunch of my friends over. The new game is out. We're gonna be playing all sorts of different modes and you can help in any any of three ways. If you can, if you can give money, uh, every single donation you give to my stream that day is just going to go straight to the Gamers Foundation, Gamers Outreach Foundation. If you want to give bits, because you can't give, uh, you know, through like PayPal or something like that, all the bits will go there as well. I'll pass those through. And then if you can't give money right now, hey, understand it's in the middle of the Christmas season. Um, things get expensive. But if you can't give that, if you could just go during the stream itself and just watch it just get the numbers up so it gets more people there it gets higher on the search and that'll help get more people there greatly appreciate it again that's going to be uh december 8th we're going to start we're aiming at 10 a.m mountain time but that might be a bit up in the air so just follow me at uh my twitter at splice stream and i'll be giving updates up there it's actually a really great cause i um, this happened to me long before the gamers, the gamers outreach um, was a thing. But when I was a kid, I was diagnosed with diabetes and I was in the hospital for about a week and a half. And I, there actually was a video game set up available and it really helped me out. So this is the kind of thing that really can make a difference in a kid's life when they're in the hospital. It's just it's a scary situation. So mm -hmm. I am 100 percent behind you on that. Um, now, if you have enjoyed the show, also, please head over to iTunes. Give us a five-star review. It makes a huge difference. It helps other people to find us. It boosts our um, our results for people searching for podcasts like ours. So, yeah, go over there. Five-star review would be much, much appreciated. And, of course, be sure to share the show with other people because, you know, we just we want to – spread our love of Brandon's books as far as possible. So you know, boost the signal. Um, before we close out, Amy and Jordan, any uh, final thoughts about anything we've talked about? There's a lot of things I want to talk about, but I'm going to save them for next time. So okay. I, I'm just excited to, to get, once we start getting into the plot and start figuring out uh, some of this, the individual things, I loved the sets plan to just distract wax over oh, and over again and just just win a fatigue game and just and it's 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 a brilliant plan until wax knows that's the plan <laughs> yep i just i i can't get over that last line just the last word in the book survive and it's just like that got it brandon <laughs> you've done it again <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks, Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, our listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, just about any other service that carries podcasts. Just go and search Cosmere Studies. 
You can also follow us and contact us through Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. That's all we've got for this week's episode, but please join us in two weeks on December 10th when we finish up our discussion of The Bands of Mourning. In the meantime, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening, and remember, there's always another secret. secret.